Petey Beats here from Pop Turn, is speaking to Jeff Teravine and about Thanksgiving, which is going to be available in theaters November 17th. Welcome back to the show, man. It's been a while. Good to see you again. So glad to be here. It's I been mean, a while. If I, I think like five years ago we did that. You were like one of the first like guests of the show because I started it in like, I think I want to say like 2016, 2017. It was around that time. And then um we started doing more things and i think you were on the show when it really was like a podcast but now it's like a full media outlet <laughs> yeah like the full deal now congratulations thanks man i appreciate it you know thanksgiving i mean i remember when this movie was announced like it's so cool because there's stages right i mean you've been an actor for a good amount of time now did voiceover as well there's always these stages right like there's the announcement of the project then they cast then there's like release dates, they're shooting the thing and everything. Is it starting to hit you that it's finally coming out? Like it's pretty crazy. There was a lot of hype around this movie and people wanted yeah. to see this movie for a while. Honestly, I guess it's been like 13 years that the core fans have been craving this thing. So when yeah. it came out, yeah, there's been a lot of hype. And it's been weird because with the, the SAG strike, obviously, a lot of the heavy hitters can't talk about it or haven't talked about it. So I think all the hype to this point has been this big, but it's going to go... Like, when Rick Hoffman and people like that start talking, it's going to be big, man. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, Eli Roth is one of these filmmakers, basically, that, like, people that love the genre, it's kind of one of those snap your fingers. Like, anytime you find out he has a new movie, you're, like, dedicated to watch that movie, right? So it's like, what was it like kind of working on an Eli Roth film, knowing that there is an appetite for his movies when they come out? Well, it... The whole thing, it was such a surreal experience because I'm a fan of him, both for his directing, but also for his, his acting. And it's weird. I had the same thing when I did Dark Matter, when I, I, I came on the, late in the first season. And I remember meeting Alex Malari, who played this real heavy, bad dude. And you expect them to be like that for some reason when you meet them. And Eli is the nicest friggin' guy in the world. Like, down to earth, fun, really made the set fun, and also knew what he wanted. So yeah, it was it was incredible to be part of that. Um, I was nervous as hell, um, <laughs> as usual. Yeah. And I'll tell you one crazy thing: the first day, uh, the first scene of the first day, I came down with the worst uh, pinched nerves and uh, bulging disc on the first scene, and that's when I met Eli. So I was I was terrified, and suddenly uh, the pain was so bad, I thought I was having a heart attack. Wow. I went to go see the medic in between stuff. Yeah, so it was a pretty crazy time. I had that the whole time we were shooting. When did you so, shoot this? We shot it in March and into April and May. Um, it was it was fast, man. But that's again one of the things about Eli is that people were so excited to work with him, both in front and behind the camera, that they were doing this superhuman effort to get this out for for Thanksgiving in America. Did you for like and so in terms because I the audition stories are always interesting to me because they're always different, right? You know what I mean? Did you? Audition for Officer LaBelle? Did you audition for other characters? Like, I'm just curious, what the audition process was like for you for this one? In this one, yeah, I, I remember doing it, and it was just your standard audition. <laughs> um, I read with my partner and thought, oh, a big American feature, Eli Roth, I'm not going to get this. This is the biggest wait of time in the world. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and suddenly the phone rang, so it was incredible. What is it like? Because, like, I feel like it's funny because, you know, there's slasher films where sometimes, you know, like the Friday the 13th, right? And those like Halloween where like, you know who the killer is, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's like the opposite of it where where there's like the who done it, right? Like who killed, who's the killer, right? The yeah. scream aspect. This has like both together, right? Where it's like a slasher and a who done it, which I think is like the most exciting thing, right? For people that love horror movies. Do you think yeah. about that at all? Do you know what I mean by that? It's pretty cool because it's got both of those elements. It's, yeah, it's true. And as soon as I read the script, um, right the way through, I was like, ah, I know who it is now. Oh, I know who it is now. But you never seem to know. It's constantly shifting the blame. And so it's smart. It's intelligent that way. So, yeah, but it's, it does have both those aspects. And it's it should be a wild ride, man. I haven't seen it yet, but from what I've seen of the rushes. The pandemic, obviously, you know, took, like the movie theater experience took a huge hit and everything. Everyone went home, though, and bought like their big surround sound systems and big TVs. But like, you know, man, going back to see movies in theaters, just the sound, right? And the communal component, like there's nothing better. And this one is good. It's a perfect one. Like Thanksgiving, like, this is the one you go see with friends, right? Exactly. I was just going to say, um, I love my home theater system. Yeah. For, for certain <laughs> types of stuff, it worked well. But... You know, like comedies as well, when when you have that group reaction to things and 
Again, I've seen some of the moments where the scares are going to happen. When you're in a theater with like hundreds of people, that's yeah. going to go. No, but dude, the sound, is it? Is it not crazy, Jeff? I mean, you've been doing this for a while and you've worked in video games. The video games are known for the sound. I just feel like we've come a long way with the sound editing and mixing of these movies, man. Do you know oh, what I man. mean by that? Dude, it's so crazy, yeah. eh? You see the, you, you really get the difference when you start watching older films, which I love. Yeah. But you almost have to tweak yourself to say, okay, remember this is 50 years old because it almost sometimes can be cheesy, some of the effects in that. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's now like you got this 3D sound You in my walls you behind me. I can hear things creeping around. It's just that. No, it's it. like, it's, it, they're like the, the sound mixers and sound editors are like the uh, un, unsung heroes. We talk about like the crew and the cinematographers and everything because everyone thing looks good. But dude, like I remember this summer, like all the horror movies, like especially horror movies, the sound in horror movies is so good. Like I went to go see like Five Night at Freddy's yeah. and, you know, uh, the, the Nun 2 and like the Boogeyman, the sound in these movies, dude. Like, yeah, they really do make it. And again, like video games too. I remember playing Bioshock and yeah. <laughs> you hear something again behind you and when you turn around there is something there but it, it's the sound that first draws you in oh yeah and you're I'm thinking you know this is a video game it's but Dude, I'm I played it. Dino Crisis on PlayStation and that scared the crap out of me do you remember Dino Crisis do you remember, I remember yeah <laughs> the Fair. cages right you hear yeah, the yeah. back into the cages <laughs> Man, it's so crazy and everything. I feel like whether you've been on a set once or a thousand times, Jeff, there's always going to be learning experiences. You know, you talked about Eli Roth and what he brings and the fact that it was March and April and it was quick at times and everything. But, like, I feel like there's always going to be learning experiences. So for you on Thanksgiving from an actor's storytelling perspective, what were some learning experiences for you? Um, Learning this one, um, it's just kind of going with going for it more. Um, being part of the main cast, the, Actors, there's always different levels of what your your involvement in a film. And this one, right from the get go, they made me feel like you know you're you're part of this, not just like a day player kind of thing or something. Yeah. So it gave me a lot of room to explore and try things. And again, Eli was so great that way. It'd be like, okay, you know, do this and this, but you know, if something comes to mind, just have fun with it. And you knew you could do that, as opposed to some film sets you're on. It's like you got to stick to the script and to the movements and your marks and everything like that. So. I had fun exploring things this time, which was the ball. It's going to be hard to go back to other sets <laughs> like when you don't, you're not able to do that. The horror movie genre has elevated, like it's always been around, but there's been a kind of resurgence and like some like, you know, spooky season, the amount of horror movies that people watch, man, it's crazy. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like, you know, there are different ways to scare people. People are, are writing like the psychological game and everything. But, you know, we're going, this is an Eli Roth movie, right? You're going to get the gore. You're going to get the jump scares and everything. Is it cool to work on it, like, in a way, like a traditional horror movie format, knowing that there are movies that do kind of different things? Like, do you know what I mean by that a little bit? Like, Yeah, yeah. Um, this is this is my first type of movie in this genre, the slasher sort of thing. So yeah. it was fun. I mean, when you're seeing the props and everything as well, and it's over the top, and it's fun. And that's the thing, yeah. So, but I mean, I also like other stuff as well, like the psychological thing. Yep. You just you tone it down. I, I I love most of the stuff I do. I like I love what I do for a living. I love working in it. So everything is a different challenge and a different kind of fun, you know. Mm -hmm. Playing a cop, I mean, you have this authority figure. You and Patrick have this authority figure trying to keep everyone calm and everything. What is that like when you're reading the script? Where it's like, you know, at some point, you know no one's safe right like everyone's gonna maybe uh, might get it because there's a killer on the loose and everything right but you play that authority figure is that fun to think about a little bit where like you you play a character that has to be like calm and like have everything under control but then at the end of the day like there's just a slasher in the small town and everyone's yeah gonna freak out and go for cover you know what i mean <laughs> Well, you're, you're talking about a place where, you know, the hardcore criminals were like maybe bar fights or parking tickets. Mm. And the one thing about LaBelle, my character, is that he is uh, he was formerly a Marine before he got into law enforcement. And he wasn't just a normal Marine. He was a special ops uh, force recon soldier. So this guy's been through the ringers. Mm -hmm. But even he gets stymied by trying to figure out, you know, who is this guy? He could be anywhere. People start wearing masks and stuff and that, and you, you don't know who the killer is, right? So. Yeah, I the whodunit component. I mean, it's so good, and I love it. And I think that's the fun of these movies, man. Like, look at the Scream movies, right? Like, everyone for a year and a half talks about who is the killer. Like, it's like a narrative for a year, right, Jeff, if you think about it? 
Yeah, I've actually been online just checking things out that people have been writing, and it's been fun seeing what the already even before the movie's out, like well, who is it and who's doing this, and I just saw the trailer for this, and it's that guy or whatever. So I have yes or no. I have I have questions for you right now that are yes or no questions. The, the, uh, okay, so did you get the whole script before yes. shooting? Okay. Did you were you did you have a prediction of who you thought the killer was before reading this like before ending the script? Yes. Were you right? No. Can we just can we just leave <laughs> it at that? <laughs> we'll just leave it at that because <laughs> yeah, that I love hearing that. That's the best. Yeah, it was <laughs> like I said, the script read well right out of the gate. I was like, oh, I can't wait to do this because it was so. Cool I'm surprised they gave you all this. Like all, I'm surprised because like I've heard like people don't get, but maybe it's different for TV shows. Like I feel like I've I've, I've interviewed people like who done TV shows where they don't get the last script until like later on, so they're not. It can't happen. Yeah. yeah. In fact, actually, the last the last bunch of scenes weren't included. Um, okay. And that was purposely as well because it was a floating thing. They were. I don't know if they were just trying to confuse us or press if they got a hold of it or something like that. But yeah, that kind of stuff was changing all the time. So we didn't know. And I really can't wait for people to go see it in the theaters. November 17th. I mean, everyone's going to go see it. And uh, it's going to be one of those classics, man, where people are going to kind of keep continue watching it and watching it. And uh, no, I'm really happy for you, man. Uh, like, uh, it's, it's really awesome. And I wanted to thank you for coming back on the show. It was great to catch up. Oh, man, anytime. You're a ball to work with here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Thanksgiving is going to be available in theaters November 17th. So you'll be able to check that out via Sony Pictures. And then um, uh, your Instagram account, you're, you're, all, you're, you're, you're around, eh? Like on Instagram, people want to keep up to date? Yeah, Jeff Thurvinen on Instagram. I, I'm on that thing too much, bro. Awesome. <laughs> well, this has been Pop Turner of YouTube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. You're going to, of course, be able to catch Jeff Thurvinen as LaBelle in Thanksgiving in theaters November 17th. Until next time, this is Jeff and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.